Welcome back. So you purchased a HP G7, G8, or G9 server, and you want to learn how to use the ILO that is integrated in your server for managing it remotely. You've come to the right place if that's what you're trying to do, because I'm going to go over everything you need to know to start using ILO, and hopefully after this you'll be able to have everything updated, working, and you'll be able to manage your servers remotely. ILO is HP's version of IPMI. It's a little computer on your server that can be used to manage your server. So it gives you, it can give you, rem remotely manage it. It gives you all the information about temperatures, allows you to control the power, has a remote console so you can see the server posting, and also you can use it in the operating system too. It's a very useful tool, so I'd highly recommend getting it set up. Everything that I talk about here is going to apply to ILO 3, which is on G7 servers, and ILO 4, which is on G8 and G9 servers. While probably similar, I'm going to say does not apply to ILO 5 or anything older than ILO 3, because I haven't tested those, I don't have any servers that have those versions of ILO on them, so I can't say for sure that this will apply, although it hasn't changed a lot, the um, functionality of ILO, so it might apply, but I'm just saying don't count on it. So. The first thing you want to gonna you're gonna want to do um, because you're probably buying the server used is reset the ILO to clear the former configuration. So what you're gonna have to do for that is turn on the server, wait for the ILO configuration prompt to come up, and then hit F8. So I'm going to turn on the server right now. All right, hit F8 when that pops up. Now, look, it's already here. This is the menu you're gonna get, and the first thing you're, wanting to, you're gonna wanna do is hit that, as it, it menu already came up, set defaults. I'm not gonna do it here because I already have this ILO card configured, so I don't wanna reset it, but it's you don't really need a tutorial for it. You just hit set defaults. It might have a confirmation message, I don't remember. If it does, just say yes. Um, what will happen is you'll immediately get exited out of this configuration utility and it'll just say like resetting ILO please wait. It does take a few minutes so don't panic it's not frozen just let it do its thing and then after that it'll just con the server will continue posting. It won't reset or anything. It won't go back to like, the beginning of the post. It'll just continue where it left off and after that there's two things you can do. What I don't recommend doing but you can do is you can sign in with the default ILO username and password which should be on a sticker on your server somewhere. Um, but the easier thing to do is just turn off the server a second time, turn it back on again and when it comes back on go back into this menu and then you can set up a user account for yourself and the network stuff and all that from here and it's easier than just logging in with the default password and username and all that so go over to user first and you can go to edit and the you can you'll have a list of all the accounts that's me instead of it will say like administrator and it will have the default password and stuff there but you can edit the default account so you can put your name in you can put you're you log on now. I'm sorry about the dog barking. Um, you're probably going to hear that throughout the video. And you can put in a password and make sure all of your privileges are set to yes so you can do everything. And then do F10 to save. Since I already have this set up, I'm just going to escape out of this. Um, and then really the only other thing you need to do is configure the network. So go to DNS, DHCP. Depending on how you want to set this up, you definitely want to give ILO a static IP because you're going to need to use that IP address to log in. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it, and since everybody's ways of doing it are different, I'm not going to really go into detail because everybody's routers are different, everybody's networks are different. It's more determined by how your network is set up than how ILO works. How I like doing it is setting up static IPs in my DHCP server, so I just leave DHCP on and I just find that automatically assigned IP address in my router and I set it as a static IP so then it doesn't change. So that's just setting that in the router but you can also set it in ILO if you would like to do that. And then after you're done giving it a static IP and everything, 
Um, you might need to reboot or unplug it or something, or to turn off DHCP and then turn it back on again for it to register that you've given it a new IP address in DHCP, if that's how you're going to do it. Again, you don't have to do it like that. Come over to the Network tab and then, I forgot what it was, NIC and TCP IP. And this IP address here is the one you're going to use to connect to ILO. So after you've set up your username, or after you've reset ILO, set up your username and set up the network settings, write down that IP address and you can connect to it in your web browser. I'm just going to let the server finish booting, so I'm going to exit, and then this is done, and we're done here. We don't need to worry about this anymore. This is what ILO3 looks like. Um, if Once you go to that IP address, you're going to get something like this, and you can go put in your username and password that you made. And once you do that, you'll get a page like this. And this is for ILO3. Everything that I just did there, I'm probably gonna put a disclaimer because I forgot to say this. Um, everything that I did before this point also applies to ILO4. I will tell you when something I'm doing does not apply to ILO4. I'm doing all of this demonstration on an ILO3 machine. Um, and I will tell you when it doesn't apply. Um, like this interface is quite different from the newest version of ILO 4, and I'll get to that later because there's going to be stuff about firmware updating, which you're going to have to do. And I'm not going to go too much over the interface in here because I think it's pretty intuitive. I will just show you a couple things, like here's the main page, you get like server name and um, the integrated remote console, which just really doesn't work with ILO 3 anymore. All of these consoles are outdated and they just don't work well. I was using ILO for connecting to this server, this very server when I was in the BIOS there, and configuring this. And so there is a workaround for that, and I will get to that later, but just these consoles that are integrated with the web application, just don't, just don't use them. They don't work at all anymore. So ignore those. I will show you a workaround for this later so you can use the console in ILO, ILO 3 because it is a very, very useful tool to have. Um, so yeah, under system information, this is where you're going to get most of your information on like fan speeds, temperatures, if it loads, there you go, temperatures, all, all the boards that have temperature gauges on there, power readings, processors, I mean, you've got everything in here. And ILO 4 is a little different. If this, if you think this looks nothing like your ILO 4 version, you have outdated firmware, and I'm going to get to that too. So I'm just going to quickly show you... ILO 4. Again, the configuration in the BIOS is identical to ILO 3, but um, the actual software or the firmware that runs on the ILO 4 chip is a lot newer. So you get some really cool, you get a really nice interface, it's really good, and you get an HTML5 console. So you can use the web console for with ILO 4, which is really nice. But yeah, I'll show you how to get a console for ILO 3 too, because you probably want to use it just on, in the web application here the .NET and Java ones just don't work well anymore you can get it to work with Internet Explorer and some extra software sometimes but it's not really worth it in ILO 4 you get HTML5 console a much more modern interface and you can get some really cool um, graphs and stuff like this temperature graph it's a picture of the server pretty much just temperature sensors making up the body of the server instead of it being an actual picture of the server. ILO 4, when it was first released with G8 servers, looked a lot like ILO 3. It would look almost exactly like this, except you would get HTML5 console in here still. Most of the functionality is there, just the interface is more dated, and so that's a really good reason to update the firmware. That's what we're gonna get to now, is firmware. The one thing that you might run into with ILO 3 is when you connect, you're gonna get a, if you're using like Google Chrome or Firefox, you're gonna get some sort of variation of the SSL error bad Mac alert error message. You might get that. And don't worry, the ILO chip isn't broken. It's a firmware issue and you can get around it and make it work. This server had the same problem and I've gotten it working just fine. So what you're gonna wanna do if you ha get that error, is you're gonna have to use Internet Explorer, unfortunately. So go over to Internet Explorer, and you still can't connect to an Internet Explorer. It still won't work, but there is a workaround. Don't tell me to install Microsoft Edge Microsoft, thank you. You wanna go over to this tools wheel here, get the menu, 
go to internet options, go over to advanced, scroll all the way down, and uncheck use TLS 1.2. After you do that, you should be able to connect to ILO just fine. I'm gonna get out of this. And from there, you can update the firmware. So how do you update the firmware? Well, you download it from HP, HPE's website. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description, but um, if you just search like ILO 3 firmware, this will take you to the same place. Just make sure you go to the revision history tab so you can get the latest one. So this, is, it's identical for ILO 4 here. It's the same website, the interface for extracting the files and everything, which I'll get to, is the same. The only thing that's different with ILO 3 from ILO 4 is that if you have a really outdated ILO 4 version, which I did also had on this server, you have to update to version, at least version, way down here, way down here, version 1.2, right here. This is, this is the oldest version you can have before you can update to 1.94, which is the latest version of ILO 3. So if you have like version 1, or like what I had, which was 1.15 down here, um, you'll need to update to 1.2 before you can update to the latest version. And once you update to the latest version, you won't get that bad MAC address alert anymore. You will have better web security stuff and <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but you'll get the new HP logo too. So for demonstrating this, I'm going to download the version 1.94 of ILO 3. And so yeah, you can click that link, it'll take you to the page. And again, I'll leave a link to all these things that I'm covering in the description so you can quickly get there and update your firmware. And it's downloading down here. Um, so once this, down with this is downloaded, there's two, there's actually three ways that you can go about getting this onto your server. If you have Windows on your server, you'll notice that there is an option to install it within Windows. However, I've never gotten this to work. And to be honest, not many people are running Windows Server in their home lab, so you probably won't be able to run this executable file on your server. And I mean, that's okay, but it's, it's a lot easier to do within ILO. So there's two ways you can do it. You can either extract in here, which is fine, but I mean, just the way that I like doing it, just because it's easy, if you have 7-zip installed, you can right-click this executable, go to 7-zip, open archive, and remember you have to have 7-zip installed, and go to AMD64, nope, that's the wrong folder, ignore that. You wanna go to ILO3, you wanna look for the bin file. So this is ILO3194. I believe if you use the extract tool at this, it'll extract everything, so I just like using 7-zip because you can just pick out what you want, which is the bin file. And so now that we have the bin file here, we can go back to the web interface, which you can do this in Internet Explorer too if your ILO version is really old and you need to use Internet Explorer. Um, go to Administration, ILO Firmware, and click Choose File, pick your bin file, and I'm not going to do it here because this is already up to date. We click open, then hit the upload button over here, and it'll take a little bit. Don't turn off your server while you're doing this. It's like a BIOS update. If you, if your server loses power while you're flashing any component, it's probably going to kill it. I don't think that ILO will survive if you turn it off while it's doing a firmware update. So let it upload, let it update, and then it should go back to the login screen and tell you to wait while it's resetting ILO and then you can log back in after a few minutes and you should get an updated version and you'll have to have to do this twice if your firmware version is older than 1.2 on ILO 3. ILO 4 doesn't have that issue and ILO 4 also doesn't have the TLS error issue. So that's how you update firmware. It's the same in ILO 4, just a little bit more of a neater interface, still under administration firmware and upload upload the file. It's the same as ILO 3. I will leave a link to this so you, this page so you can download your ILO 3 form, firmware as well as this page so you can download your ILO 4 firmware. We're in the last part of the video here. Really, that's the most you need to know. You need to know how to update firmware and I can't stress enough that you need to update to version 1.2 of ILO 3 before you can update to 1.94. And also, I mean, it's good to just keep your firmware up to date too, so I can't stress that enough either. Keep your firmware up to date. It makes everything a lot easier to use. Especially with ILO 4, this interface is so much better than something like this. So the final part of the video, I remember how I said earlier that 
The integrated consoles for ILO 3 don't work anymore. There's a console app you can install on your computer, which I was using, it's right here, that um, allows you to connect. It's a console, it's software you can install on a Windows machine and allows you to connect to ILO 3, 4, and actually 5 too, and use the remote console without going to the web. Which, I mean, by itself is kind of handy if you don't want to open up your web browser and go to the ILO 4 web app and go to HTML5 and open the console that way. You can just open this program on your taskbar and immediately get the console. But it's pretty much like required for ILO 3, because without ILO Without this, for ILO 3, you're just not going to be able to use it. These links just... And then you can download Java stuff, and it just really does not work with modern browsers anymore. But if you install this software, um, which I'll leave a link to it in the description too, HPE Lights Out Standalone Remote Console for Windows. Very catchy name. And again, go over to Revision History and get the latest version. And once you get the installer, you can go down... Or you can just run it. It'll ask you if you want to do a custom installation or... A typical installation just choose typical and then once you open it you'll just you'll just put in the ILO IP address the username for your ILO account and your password for your ILO account check remember password if you want hit connect and you can connect to your ILO 3 server this is an ILO 3 server and use the console on Windows machines you'll probably get a in device manager you'll probably have a like a PCI device error of some sort, or not error, it'll, it'll be like a PCI device that Windows couldn't find drivers for, something like that, I don't remember exactly what they call it, but it'll be like a unknown device. I'm not sure if it's with ILO 4, but it's definitely with ILO 3 because it happened on this server which does have Windows on it. There's two drivers you need. You need the ILO 3.4 channel interface driver and the ILO 3.4 management controller driver. You need to install the channel interface driver before the management controller driver and that'll clear up all of that stuff and you'll have a clean device manager with all the drivers that you need. I'll leave a link to these in the description as well. And so yeah, that's all you need to know about ILO for now. I mean, I think you can figure out the interface yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to understand. ILO makes life with your HP servers so much easier, so I'd highly recommend doing updating the firmware and getting everything set up so you can manage your servers from the comfort of your couch or wherever you want to be. Please consider subscribing because I don't have many subscribers and I do like making these videos. So if you want more server stuff like this, let me know. And if you have any problems, you can ask questions in the comments. I'll try to get back to you and I might be able to help you figure out why your ILO isn't working properly. So that's all I have for you today. So thanks for watching and yeah, bye-bye.